Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do granular level restores with Microsoft SharePoint. And we're using this through uh, the Cohesity interface to, to back up the actual database and its contents for SharePoint. And then we're using our third-party integration with Crawl on track in order to actually give us those granular level restores. So going into the Cohesity interface here, just to show you real quick, going to protection and then sources, I just wanna show that we have the physical SQL server as well as the SQL Server registered as a SQL Server and database, which is the first step. You'll need to do that in order to create a backup job. And then if we go to protection and protection jobs, we're gonna see that we have a SharePoint content backup job, which is again, we have a successful run here of that to where we have backed up the SQL database for SharePoint. In this particular example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out here to the SharePoint site and we're gonna just randomly select two files here. So these C2000, C3000 data sheets, and we're gonna delete them as though a end user has deleted them. Click okay. And as you'll see here, these files will get deleted from the SharePoint server. And there you go, they're deleted. So now that we've deleted them from SharePoint, we're gonna go through the process of doing a granular level, object level restore of those objects within the SharePoint database. So let's go back to the Cohesity interface here. And what we're going to do is we're gonna to go to recovery and then we're going to recover. And what we're gonna do is an instant volume mount in this particular case. Okay, and then we're gonna search for SharePoint And as we see here, it recognizes that we have the SQL server that is the SharePoint server, or the database for the server rather, and we're gonna select that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the C drive for that volume in particular. And what we're gonna do is if we had multiple recovery points, we would have the option of going in here and change and select a specific recovery point. So if you have a bunch of different backup jobs, you could go to a particular point in time that you could recover from. But since we just had the one, we're gonna leave that as it is. The mount target. Now the mount target we're going to change because I don't wanna restore it over on top of the existing running database for SharePoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it to a different server so that we can selectively pick those objects out. So we're going to click change server and we're going to open this up. Now in the case, the particular virtual machine that I'm working off of right now that we have the curl software installed on is this ADC server. So we're going to select that and Click save to save that. That's where we're going to mount it from and create that mount point on this particular server. So then we're gonna go ahead and do the create the task. And this is gonna run pretty quick. It won't take long at all. And as you can see, boom, it's successful. And you can look at the details of the process there if you like. Now, one thing to note is that um, we'll do this later, but whenever you create this instant mount point for a restore process, obviously this is something that we're going to want to get rid of and delete after we're done and we've restored those objects that we're looking to restore. So there is a teardown function. We'll do this automatically, but that can be done later. So now what we're going to do is we're going to minimize this Chrome window and I'm going to bring up the C drive, again, this particular virtual machine I'm running off of is the one that we have the OnTrack software installed. And this is where we've created that instant volume mount point. So, you know, when we click on C here, we look at, we now have a folder called Cohesity Mounts. And here is our restore point that we've recreated from that backup job. So we're gonna go ahead and double click on that. And then we're gonna go into that particular database and go into the data file. And here, as you can see, you have the LDF files along with the MDF file. 
So I went ahead and reclosed the OnTrack Power Control application. So this one here is specifically for SharePoint. There is individual ones based upon whether it's for Exchange uh, or just regular SQL. But again, we're doing SharePoint. So let's go ahead and go into that. And this will come up. And as you can see, it automatically brings up this data wizard here to where we're going to point to the files. So we are going to click add. And again, we're going to go back to that same location that we were at before down to the data folder to where we see those files. So now what we're going to do is the content files, the content MDF and log file. We're going to go ahead and click open. As you can see, it adds it in there. Now, uh, this should put this path in here automatically. Then we're going to click Next. And we have the SharePoint server URL. And click Next again. And as you can see, it's going to process that real quickly. And as we see, we have the source up here of information. So as you can see, I clicked on documents here. If I open that up, I'm just going to sort that real quick. And there's here's the two documents that we're looking to restore. Now, just to let you know, we do have to open this up down here. Click in documents. Here's what's currently in here. And as you can see, we did, in fact, from the current live database, we did delete those. So now one, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight both of these. Now, an important thing to know is that we're going to drag and drop them into the left-hand folder here where we want them, not down in here. It won't let you do that. So give it a second, and it will put those in there. And it's going ahead and it's copying those. So it's completed and copied them. We're going to click close. And then as you can see, we now have brought those two objects back into the current live database. So now that we've restored those two objects, let's go ahead and bring up the Chrome browser again. We're going to go back to the SharePoint site. And we are going to go ahead and refresh the page. And those two documents, as you can see, are now back restored in there. So now to finish things up, let's go back to the Cohesity user interface. As I mentioned before, now that we've pulled out and done a granular restore of those two files, those particular PDFs, we can now go ahead and tear down that mount point because we don't need it anymore. There's no reason for it. Now, obviously, if you want to do more from it or want to keep it for any reason, you can. But otherwise, best practice is to go ahead and tear it down. So we will tear it down. We'll confirm, yes, we want to tear it down. And as you can see, it now says it's destroyed. So if we go back to the folder location, go back to C drive, go into Cohesity Mounts, as you can see, that restore point is no longer there for that particular volume of the SQL Server. That is how easy it is to set up a backup job to back up the SQL database for SharePoint. And then to be able to do a granular restore using the Kroll third-party tool that we integrate with with our Cohesity software.